In this tutorial, we'll look at a couple of techniques for adding drama or a splash of color to your photos in PaintShop Pro 2018. Both techniques involve masking just the parts of the photo you want to highlight and reducing the focus on everything else. The tools we'll use are Photo Effects, Instant Effects, Smart Selection Brush, Magic Wand and other selection tools, and one of the Adjust tools. In the first example, we'll start with this photo of a wedding scene and end with this result in which the couple stands out in color and the background is more muted. I've got PaintShop Pro open in the Edit workspace. To browse to find the wedding photo, I want to use the organizer. I can open this in the Palettes menu or by right-clicking anywhere and choosing Palettes Organizer, or I can just press Shift F9. To set the folder where the organizer will look for files, I'm clicking the navigation icon to bring up my folders, and here's where my photo is stored. I can right-click on the photo thumbnail to see several options, such as full screen preview or edit photo. Or I can just double-click the photo's thumbnail to bring it into the editor. To get more real estate in my edit workspace, I can click the push pins for the organizer and navigation which minimizes both of these. I can always find their tabs and hover on them to get them back. Speaking of extra palettes, another one you might want to keep handy is the Learning Center. For whatever tool you've activated, the Learning Center will give you some details on what the tool does, any available options, information on modifier keys like Shift or Control, and some tips. I'm using my push pin to minimize this window as well. So let's get to work on this photo. I'm going to zoom in by scrolling my mouse wheel up. The first step when editing should always be to make a copy of the image so that any changes you make won't affect the original. This is done in the Layers palette where I'm right-clicking on the background layer and choosing Duplicate. This new layer goes on top of the original layer and I'm clicking the layer name and changing it to grayscale. To reduce this new layer to black and white, I'm choosing Effects, Photo Effects, black and white film. I can see the results by clicking Preview on Image. The photo is now grayscale and it looks pretty good, but I'm going to reduce the brightness a bit and also bring up the clarity. This grayscale image is one option for the background of my finished photo. I also like the look of a sepia background, so I'm making another copy of the original image and naming it sepia. Now this layer is active, and I'm clicking the eye icon for the grayscale layer to turn it off. Sepia was an option in the Photo Effects menu, and there are a few other sepia options in PaintShop Pro's Instant Effects. These can be found in their own palette, and the one I like is Sepia Medium Age. To apply the effect, just double click on the effect thumbnail. Our next layer will contain the part of the photo we want to highlight, the bride and groom. This will be done on another copy of the original background layer. I want this layer to appear above the sepia layer, so I'm dragging it to the top in the layer order, and I'll rename it Masked Color. Now I want to start selecting the parts of the photo I want to keep. Selecting is also called masking. Think of it as marking off areas you want to protect similar to using masking tape to protect areas while painting. A good selection tool for this can be found in the Select Tools flyout. I'm choosing Smart Selection Brush. This tool creates a smart selection based on a sample color. I can adjust the brush size here or by dragging the mouse while pressing the Alt key. The tolerance controls how similar the selected colors need to be. I'm clicking here on the groom's shoulder and I get a bit of his suit selected. To select more of him, I can also drag the mouse, but first I need to make sure that the mode is Add so that everything I click will be added to what's currently selected. I could also add by keeping the Shift key pressed while clicking or dragging. So now I'm dragging along this way, and we have much more selected. I'll do the same for the bride's dress and arms. Don't worry if you select too much. You can use the eraser later to move things back to the background. For smaller areas like faces, I'm using a smaller brush. I can zoom in with my mouse wheel to see better. 
Keep clicking or dragging with the Smart Selection brush until everything you want to highlight is selected. And for any areas that are hard to get with the Smart Selection brush, try Freehand Selection. So now we want to keep what's selected and erase the background with its bright green colors. To switch what's selected with what's not selected, choose Selections Invert. I'm pressing the Delete key, which removes the background, leaving just the wedding couple. I don't need anything selected anymore, so I'm pressing Ctrl D, which is the same as choosing Selections Select None. For any background areas that were left behind, I'm using the eraser, sweeping over what I want to erase. So here's my new photo with the couple highlighted, but I think they look a little too bright. So while the masked color layer is still selected, I'm changing its blend type from normal to soft light. That's now a little too similar to the background. I can try another blend such as hard light, or I can go back to normal blend and reduce the layer opacity just a little bit. Now I can compare the two different backgrounds by turning on and off their layers. For the second technique, I'll use a different photo. I'm going back to the organizer and bringing in this pink flower. This time I'm dragging and dropping it into the edit workspace. With this technique, we don't need to place each effect on a separate layer. We can make all adjustments on one layer. Though as before, it's always recommended to create a new layer for all changes so that the original image will be preserved. The flower is what will be standing out in our edited image, and we can mask it like we did with the wedding photo. I'm using the magic wand this time, and because the match mode is set to color, the tool will identify the color where you click and select everything that matches that color. My mode is add like before, and I want to check contiguous so that I won't select any pink bits that should stay in the background. With the default tolerance, I'll select small areas at a time. But since the pinks are all so different than the surrounding greens, I can use a pretty high tolerance to grab pretty much all of the pinks. I need to zoom in closely to get some of the outer areas and to fill some of the selection holes. And I can use the freehand selection tool to scoop up the hard to click areas. Down in this area, I'm going back to the magic wand reducing the tolerance, and clicking on the white areas to select them one by one. As before, I want to invert what's selected. Now the background is what's selected, but instead of deleting the background, I'm choosing Adjust, Hue and Saturation, Hue, Saturation, Lightness. I can reduce the colors from the background by reducing the saturation to zero and I can darken it by reducing the lightness. Or I can bring back some saturation and some light and try out different background tones by adjusting the hue. I'm checking Colorize so that the color is uniformly applied to the background. So there you have it, two techniques, both involving masking, for highlighting specific parts of your photo. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. There are many other ways you can adjust backgrounds, such as brightness or contrast, blurring or softening, or adding noise. There are also many other photo effects and instant effects you can try out. To see any of these in action, check out Corel's Discovery Center at learn.corel.com. And if you found this tutorial on YouTube while searching for training content, you can find many more videos and written tutorials at the Discovery Center again at learn.corel.com.